In this lecture, we will be learning how to upload files to AWS S3 directly using ASP.NET Core minimalistic APIs. Let's go ahead and see it in action. So what I've done over here is I've created an API based project in ASP.NET Core. If you want to create something from scratch, you can do so. So all you need to do is launch a new instance of Visual Studio and here click on create a new project, choose ASP.NET Core Web API and give your application a name like I've given over here S3 file upload. Once that's done, you need to install a package. Now that package is AWS SDK dot S3 and if you see over here independencies we have that package over here and you can install it directly by going to view and other windows package manager console over here you can run this command let me zoom in a bit dot net add package aws sdk.s3 so once you have executed this it will reflect over here aws sdk.s3 similarly you also need to have aws sdk.extensions.net core.setup these two you need to add. Once you have added these two, the Shosh buckle that you see over here is provided to you by default when you create a web API. So you don't have to manually go ahead and add this. This will be there when the project will be created for you. Now, once that's done, on the AWS side, you need to create a bucket. So here, what I've done is I've created a bucket called Skill Bakery Upload. Once you have created the directory, you also need to have access to this bucket using some credentials. Those credentials can be retrieved or created using IAM roles. So to access IAM, you can just go to services and here search for IAM and then select IAM over here. So once you will select that, you will have the option of creating a particular user. So what I'll be doing is I'll be creating a new user for this particular thing. So here under users, you can see that I've created one called Skill Bakery. Now for this particular account, I have the option to create access keys. Just like over here, you see there is an option to create access key. You will get it over here as well. So once you have created the access key, you can download the same and then using those credentials that is access key as you can see over here and then a secret so those two combinations you need and once you have it just go to app settings.json and provide the access key and secret access key over here once you have done that so this is coming under aws section so in this section we have two key value pairs access key id and secret access key now once you have done that save it after saving the next thing that you need to do is go to this file called program.cs. In program.cs file, you need to ensure that you have all these namespaces included. The first line is by default there, builder equals web application dot create builder. The next line that you see, what we are doing over here is we are taking app settings dot json and putting it under configuration. So using this configuration, we will be able to access the various sections of this file. And that is what we will be doing next. Here, add service to the container that is going to be there by default. And then we have these two lines as well provided. That is for Swagger Gen and then Endpoints API Explorer. So these were by default provided when you created the project. Then we have this over here. That is the AWS settings. So what we are doing, we are going into this app settings.json file. And we are getting or retrieving this section AWS. Once we have that section, we are creating a basic AWS credential. So this is the class basic AWS credential and we are providing access key ID and secret access key. These are the two keys that we have specified in our app settings JSON file. Once that's done, we are going and configuring AWS options. Now configuration.get AWS options will provide all the default parameters to this variable AWS options. The two items that we need to update are credentials so you see credentials we created over here and that is what we are passing and then region in my case the region is ap south one 
So I've passed these two in the AWS options and finally I'm making use of builder.services.add default AWS options and this is what we are passing to this. Then we are adding S3 service over here, add AWS service. Once that's done, the remaining stuff is as is generated by the code generator. So we're done with the program.cs file. Now next file that we need to explore is weather forecast controller.cs. Now this file that you see weather forecast.cs is a model file which is used inside the controller. And this is created by default when you create the web API project. So you can leave it. Even this file that I've created, the credentials, I'm not using it anymore. So I can just get rid of this as well. And here we have the weather forecast controller. Now this controller is also created by default. And what we have done over here is we have just added a couple of things like this variable over here, I Amazon S3, S3 client. So using this, we will be doing all the uploads and all. Next, what we have done is we have passed this S3 client in the constructor. So here you can see I Amazon S3, S3 client, and we are assigning it over here. Now that's done. The next step is we have created a method and we're calling it upload under this controller. And this is going to upload a file. We are checking if the file is null or length is less than or equal to zero. We are simply returning invalid file. Otherwise, we are providing the bucket name as skill bakery upload. And then over here, we are creating a directory. So if I pass the file key like this, so this will create a folder first and inside that folder, this file will be created. We take that into account and then using memory stream, we are doing this asynchronous operation. Finally, we are passing that file key over here. So bucket name is this. In my case, it's bakery upload. Then key is the file key and input stream. So this is the file data, which is provided by the memory stream. Once that's done, the put request is prepared and we are using s3 client.put object async and we are passing this to that method. The response is then returned and if the response is okay, we say that file upload to s3 successfully. Otherwise, we are simply saying the status code error uploading file to s3 and that is all that we need to do. Now, let's go ahead and see it in action. So here I'll be running this. You can see the Swagger UI provides me this API list and here I can also go ahead and try it out. So I can just choose a file like this image over here I can click and say execute. When I do that, you can see the breakpoint is there. So I'll just execute this now. And here, if everything goes well, you can see the response body file uploaded to S3 successfully. Now from where this message is coming, if you see over here, we are saying return OK, file uploaded to S3 successfully. And that is what you see over here. And then the response header and code is shown over here. Now let's go ahead and check the S3 bucket as well. And there you go. The file is appearing. You can also see buckets, skill bakery upload, and then the directory under which this file was uploaded. So this is the file and the other data points like type and last modified and standard class, the file size, all these things are shown over here. And that's how you can upload a file directly to S3 using AWS SDK and ASP.NET Core API.